Australia is vast and empty. Home to a modest population of about 25 million people, this nation girt by sea is famous the world over for its boundless plains to share. About 85% of Australians live within just 50 kilometres of the coast, with over half of the national population living in the cities of Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney alone. What this means, of course, is that robust logistical and transportation connections between these three cities is vital for the national economy. Enter Inland Rail, perhaps the largest public infrastructure project Australia has ever seen, creating a brand new connection between Brisbane and Melbourne. Now, let's have a look at it. You guys know what I'm talking about? Currently, rail traffic between Brisbane and Melbourne, and indeed from Brisbane to the rest of Australia, must pass through the extremely busy and congested Sydney Suburban Rail Network. After having already traversed the rather circuitous and almost entirely single track North Coast Line. Combined, these factors increase transit times for freight from the Sunshine State, and in so doing, increase transportation costs as well. The pandemic situation of 2020 saw major growth in Australia's online retail sector, with a 34.9% year-on-year increase of online purchases and a 21.3% increase of households shopping online. This in turn put ever more stress on Australia's freight transportation infrastructure to cope with this significant increase in demand. Furthermore, it's predicted that Australia's overall freight volumes across all sectors are set to more than double by the year 2050. With this enormous growth, both presently being experienced and forecast into the future, Australia needs to address this growing infrastructure shortfall and make a significant public works investment to avoid the nation grinding to a halt with a network unable to cope with its demand. Fortunately, Australia's federal government, through its wholly owned Australian Rail Track Corporation, who operate 8,500 kilometres of the national rail network across five states and one territory, are well aware of this need and have been working on a solution for some time now. And that solution, of course, is Inland Rail, a creatively named 1,725 kilometre long rail project that connects the second and third largest cities in Australia, Melbourne and Brisbane respectively. This connection is via a inland route, passing through or near to the regional cities and towns of Toowoomba, Moree, Narrabri, Narramine, Parks, Wagga Wagga, Albury and Seymour. The Inland Rail project will construct 607 kilometres of brand new railway line, with the remaining 1,118 kilometres consisting of existing rail corridors, which will subsequently be subject to upgrades, enhancements, or indeed having new tracks being laid. The benefits of Inland Rail have multiple facets. Naturally, the transit times for freight trains travelling to and from Brisbane and Melbourne will be significantly reduced, as will freight services to and from Sydney, as there will be much less traffic to contend with on a North Coast line, as well as Sydney's suburban commuter network. The reduction in traffic will reduce transit times and by extension, transport costs. These costs will be further reduced by a design feature of the Inland Rail project, the double stacking of intermodal freight traffic. Double stacking is most well known and seen in North America, occurring in both Canada and the United States of America. Double stacking does happen in Australia, as shown in the background clip from MS Trains, link in the description. However, these larger trains do not operate nationwide, as much of the surrounding infrastructure, such as bridges and tunnels, are many decades old, if not older than a century, as is particularly the case on the eastern seaboard and the aforementioned North Coast Line. These bridges and tunnels were simply not engineered in a way to allow such large payloads to be carried as they were not, and indeed could not be hauled at the time of the railway's construction. Because of the decision to allow double stack trains along the full length of the inland rail network, a significant portion of the project's work on existing rail corridors will be on engineering projects to accommodate the larger height and radius required by double stack trains for bridges and tunnels respectively. Double stacked freight trains allow for higher capacity trains within the same length of train as previously. This further reduces costs and traffic as less trains are needed, allowing goods to arrive sooner. However, better traffic conditions won't just be felt on the rails. 
A typical train that will run on inland rail once completed will have a capacity of 108 B double trucks. That is a truck and trailer combination consisting of a prime mover coupled to two trailers, a common sight on Australia's major highways. Freight transportation via inland rail will be much more fuel efficient and is also considered to be much safer with the project predicting the withdrawal of these vehicles from Australia's roads, preventing up to 15 serious crashes each year. Criticism of the project has come from several different groups of stakeholders and for several different reasons, which is to be expected for a project on the scale of inland rail. Perhaps the most widely publicised criticism of the Inland Rail project comes from residents and organisations within the Darling Downs region of southern Queensland. This is notable as well over half of the project's infrastructure within the state of Queensland falls within this region. The Darling Downs extend from Toowoomba, its largest population centre, sitting at the top of the Great Dividing Range and falling 125 kilometres west of Brisbane, and encompassing an area of 77.3 thousand square kilometres to the north, south and west of the city. The criticism from the residents of this region are primarily concerns as to the suitability of the selected rail corridors, and particularly in regards to sufficient study at the suitability of the ground that the rail corridors lie on. These concerns come from the extremely soft black soil found in the region, which is itself caused engineering difficulties for existing road and rail infrastructure. Another criticism of the Inland Rail project, though from much of the length of the project's route, and not just from the Darling Downs, is in regards to the effect on the immediate surrounds of the rail corridor, noise pollution, lowered property values and the like. As with the aforementioned soil and engineering concerns, affected farmers and communities say that the Australian Rail Track Corporation in charge of the project have often failed to provide satisfactory answers to a number of questions, as seen in this article from the New South Wales Farmers Association. One particular location of local residents experiencing significant frustration is the routing of the project between the towns of Narramine and Narrabri in New South Wales, where Inland Rail is seeking to bypass an existing rail corridor in an effort to streamline operations and save transit times on a journey from Brisbane to Melbourne and vice versa. That being said, as a whole, people are supportive of the Inland Rail project, and affected landowners are mostly just asking why here and why me? and have, as mentioned, not received satisfactory answers to those questions. Criticism has been levelled also in regards to the business case of the Inland Rail project, as seen in this article from the Grattan Institute and the Australian Financial Review. This is understandable given the enormous $10 billion price tag on the project, and the likelihood, or not, of seeing a sufficient return on investment. The article also raises concerns of overruns in terms of both construction time and construction costs due to the sheer scale of the project, further noting that nobody really knows for sure how any individual project will turn out and whether it will provide a worthwhile return on investment, especially in the case of inland rail, as the demand for freight rail is far more likely to ebb and flow with the state of the economy than the movement of people on other large-scale transport infrastructure projects such as interurban highways or passenger rail. While of course this is fair and indeed quite reasonable criticism, treating rail infrastructure and operation as a business rather than a vital public service it arguably is, seems a little odd. Regardless of the criticism that exists for it, Inland Rail is a revolutionary Australian public infrastructure project. Predicted to open in around 2025, the whole nation will benefit from being better connected, from lower costs and shorter waits for goods. Australian industry will benefit from being closer to their supply of materials, as well as being closer connected to export as well. The planet will be less polluted, with hundreds of trucks being replaced on Australia's roads, which will see the roads become safer as well. Despite being away from the sparkling lights of Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney, all three will be much closer together when Inland Rail arrives come 2025. Inland Rail isn't the only major rail infrastructure project in Australia currently underway. So if you'd like to learn more about those, then let me know by clicking subscribe and a notification bell, and a like button too if you enjoyed the video. It takes only a few seconds and would help me out greatly. Much love to you all. Thanks so much for watching. You guys know what I'm talking about.